The death rate for middle-aged white Americans has been going up, and that's been happening for more than a decade. A new report detailing that trend came out today, and it shows that it's different than other Western countries, including Germany, Britain, France, Canada. NPR health correspondent Rob Stein has been looking into the findings and what explains them. Americans may have lots of problems, but for decades, there was one thing everyone thought was getting better, pretty much across the board. Year after year, the death rate kept falling. Angus Deaton is a Nobel Prize winning economist at Princeton who's been paying attention to this. GDP and mortality and education are the sort of basic statistics for how the nation's doing. So Deaton and his wife, Anne Case, who's also a researcher at Princeton, decided to take a closer look at what was going on with the nation's death rate. Pretty quickly we started falling off our chairs because of what we found. What they found was something dramatic had happened to one big group, white, middle-aged Americans. Their death rate wasn't going down anymore. That stopped at least 14 years ago. Even worse, it's been creeping up every year since. There was this extraordinary turnaround, which is sort of something like you would say the ship's been going in this direction for a very long time, and then all of a sudden it just reverses and goes the other way. And when we saw this, that was the thing that sort of really thought, oh my goodness, we have something here that we really haven't seen before. Instead of going down 2% a year, the death rate was up half a percent every year. That means almost half a million Americans have died who would still be alive if the trend had not reversed. We've been talking about this at various academic meetings, and you look around the room and people's mouths are just hanging open. When the researchers looked at other Western countries, they did not find the same trend. John Haga is at the National Institute on Aging, which funded the research. Something's clearly going wrong with this age group in America. The big question is, why? Well, a lot more middle-aged whites are committing suicide in the United States, and overdoses on prescription painkillers like OxyContin and illegal drugs like heroin have become epidemic. Here's Angus Deaton again. There's also accidental overdoses of alcohol, and there's big increases in cirrhosis, which is alcohol-related. That raises another question. What's up with all that? One clue. The study found that those with the least education are suffering the most in this economy. Those are the people who have really been hammered by the long-term economic malaise. So they get into middle age having their expectations just not met at all. And you introduce into that both legal and illegal drugs. And that could be just a very volatile mix. There's still another puzzle. Why is this happening only to whites? No one knows, but Jonathan Skinner, a professor of economics and medicine at Dartmouth, says there is a theory. One possible explanation is that for whites, their parents had done better, and they had been doing pretty well, and all of a sudden the financial floor dropped out from underneath them, while for African American and Hispanic households, things had never been that optimistic, and so perhaps the shock wasn't quite as great. Whatever the cause, other experts say the findings are sounding alarms. Tom Frieden heads the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This is a deeply concerning trend. We shouldn't see death rates going up in any group in society. You never want for a group to be less healthy than a group that's come before it. That should not happen. Frieden says the CDC is trying to fight the epidemic of drug abuse and other problems causing white, middle-aged Americans to lose ground. Rob Stein, NPR News. Hello, my Minkto brothers. The clip that you just heard was the original NPR story that I saw about a month ago. And I'm telling you, it made my jaw drop. I was literally in shock. I couldn't believe it. So it's taken me a month to digest it. And I had almost forgotten it because it, ran, it, it left the news cycle until I was listening to my um, regular program, which is Richard Wolf. I like to keep up with him. And they brought it up again. So I decided to listen to it and see what he had to say about it. And um, what the doctor was saying in the uh, previous segments that Richard Wolf broadcasted is exactly the same thing that I've been reading for the past, I would say, six, seven years when I started reading about the boy problem and what boys were going through in, um, in this newly feminist society so I could help my son. But if you read the uh, feminist books that came out in 2011 and 12, uh, especially The Richer Sex and uh, The End of Men by Hannah Rosen, 
a lot of what the doctor is saying is verbatim what they've been talking about. The same statistics, the same problems, the same attitudes that the women had because they their newfound economic power, their different expectation of gender roles and what uh, Hannah Rosen and her cohorts were trying to tell these newly economic lib liberated women was that they're breadwinners and they're going to have to change their attitudes about men's roles if they wanted families and marriages to survive. So I often wondered what would happen if the women couldn't give up their hypergamy and actually make that shift. And after 10 years of you know economic downturn and this so-called shift in gender balance, I can see the effect it's had on, you know, blue pill men. I'm not saying the red pill men, but blue pill men. The bill of goods they've been sold for a thousand years now doesn't work anymore. You can't cash it in anymore. And the result is depression, suicide, you know, drug abuse, alcoholism, a shorter lifespan. This gender shift, as feminists like to call it, is something black men have been dealing with for, I would say, 50 or 60 years. But never in our wildest dreams did we think it would happen to the dominant culture. And so it seems most white men never thought it would happen either. But it's interesting to see the psych the effect it's having having on white men's psyches. Now, the doctor is a leftist and a feminist. And while a lot of stuff she says is uncomfortable and there are some things that I disagree with her, but. What she's talking about is checking all the boxes, female hypergamy, male disposability, men seen as a uh, plow horse. Really, there's really no remorse for the man as a person, but man as a provider, as an object, as a human doing and not a human being. She's a doctor and she thinks she's being compassionate. But what is her whole point? Her whole point is trying to keep the family together, the family as a unit together, keeping that man useful. What's her solution? Putting him back to work, putting him back on the, on the in front of the plow, have him dig another row and raise another crop. It has nothing to do with that man's psyche or that man's well-being. It has nothing to do with him finding his passion as an individual. I mean, absolutely nothing. The whole point of reference is which is a woman's point of reference is how do we make these men useful and viable again? Has nothing to do with making that man free. He still wants to say she still wants to hold men as a person into integrated into the family structure, not him as an independent human being and an independent soul, which is what feminism is all about. It's about freeing women and keeping men captive. All the solutions are about changing masculinity and changing men so they can fit into the existing structure, resocializing men, which is something that they said about 40 years ago, which was outlined in the book uh, more than Title Nine, which I've quoted more than a few times on this channel. And after 40 years, the women aren't happy with the product. And guess what they're doing? They're using up these men for 20, 30 years and then they're casting them aside like old horses. And then they don't have the decency enough to send the old horse to the glue factory to at least die an honorable death. So what men are finding out and they're waking up to, especially the young men. And I want to tell this to the young men. This is your future. If you go down this path, this is your future because I don't expect women to change. They just get more clever. As liberated as they think they are, as free as they think they are, as much as they think they've changed, women are still the same hypergamous, selfish creatures they've been for the last 10,000 years. And they still expect you to be the same old disposable plow horse that you've been for the last 10,000 years. So now that the world has changed, the plow horse isn't needed anymore. It's been replaced by machines and the tractor. What happens to the, all these plow horses out here in the world? There's no plan for them. This is why you see increased suicide and drug use amongst the young kids, the 18 to 35, which they don't talk about. Now, me being a black man and have dealt with this all my life, 
I don't have a clue to how white men are feeling about this. I suspect it's something similar, but I can't speak for you guys. I can only imagine something that men have fought and died for for the last 500 years to build a system. And now that system is abandoning them and casting them off as worthless drones. I'm sure that's very, very hard to take. So it's no wonder that MGTOW is exploding as a phenomenon. And I suspect that it's going to blow up even further, which is exactly what the feminists don't want, which is why MGTOW is actually hated. And feminists and in the government are scrambling to figure out how are they going to fix this? This is something that they set in motion, that they scratched their heads together and they put together in 1968 and it spread across the world. Now that it's going to blow up in their face. Now you have movements like MGTOW just blazing up like wildfire all over the world. It's very strange to hear a feminist actually come on the air and actually say we have to do something for men, even though it's wrong headed. Just to hear feminists say we have to do something for men is telling brothers. MGTOW is not declining. It hasn't plateaued. It's just getting started. And stories like this coming out is going to make it grow even faster. Now they have to mainstream MGTOW not to stop it, not to kill it, but to understand it. Because the key to understand what's going on in the world today in this post-industrial system that we live in is MGTOW. These are the cracks in the old patriarchal system that started back 150 years ago. And now those cracks are starting to widen and they're becoming fissures. And people, men, are falling through the cracks. As always, comment, questions, more videos. It's a conversation we need to have.